we have asked Dr. Mike Brown to be with us this morning uh, to talk about the current pandemic. Now, many of you around Crossroads know Mike Brown. Uh, since we're a first name church, we forget that, that Mike's actually a doctor. He's just always been Mike to me, brother Mike maybe, you know. It, it, so we're, we're a first name church. But Mike is a doctor, and so I felt like it would be good to have him give us some information on this whole COVID-19 thing. Uh, so it's coming from a source that we trust. You know, that there are a wide variety of sources out there, especially all over the internet. In fact, I got in trouble for correcting somebody because they shared something that was clearly not true. And, and they got mad at me for pointing that out, even though I did it in a private message. So I'm sorry uh, that uh, that person was offended, but come on, we want to make sure our information is accurate. So, Mike, tell me, what is COVID-19? Well, it's the name of the uh, particular virus that we're working with right now in this nation that came from uh, the last part of 2019. And the, the 19 portion of, of COVID-19 has to do with the year that it was named. And uh, the CO and the VID part is coronavirus CO for the CO portion. And VI is for virus and D is for disease that the World Health Organization gave this particular virus's name. That's what we call COVID-19. Okay, so why is it so serious? I mean, why is this, how is this different than uh, uh, the flu or any other pandemic we've seen before? Well, co uh, COVID-19 is among a group of viruses that are shaped and formed in a fashion that they've called coronavirus. And those particular viruses have been around for quite a while. And I don't want to make a long uh, statement about this particular situation, but w uh, I remember hearing about coronavirus when I was in medical school in the 70s. So if, if you think that this is just a brand new thing, well, it's been around for a long time. It usually only was in animals, and if it did get to the point where it could infect humans, it was generally just a s slight cold. Now, as things went on, the uh, coronavirus did form a problem with a serious disease back in the early 2000s, and you remember hearing about SARS. This is basically SARS-2, and so if you're thinking about SARS as being a serious infection, it was, and today it is also uh, involved with that particular situation where we worry about severe respiratory infections that can be a result of this virus. Okay. So how is it spread? The spreading is again related to how it gets into the body and how it inter interacts with the body and where it replicates in the body. So we generally expect most of the virus particles to be in droplets that come out with coughing and sneezing. Those droplets can land on surfaces and sometimes that particular virus can hand, uh, stand uh, uh, alive or at least in some fashion uh, viable enough to get into another human being from picking up off the surfaces of things. So that's why we are concerned about picking things up and then putting them in our mouth or no nose area that might enter, enter our body. So that's how it's spread as far as we know. And what are the symptoms? The symptoms typically, uh, one of the first ones are fever and generally feeling of tiredness and most of the other uh, symptoms are respiratory related, that being anything that has to do with the nose clear down through to the bottom of the lungs. So anything that involves itself with coughing, sneezing, uh, any type of fever and fatigue are the main symptoms we're looking for. Okay, I, I gotta tell you, I shared earlier, and I wanna repeat it for this group, there was actually a time several years ago, I was staying up late watching television and I was healthy, I was a young man in my 30s, and I was watching this special about heart attacks and the treatment for heart attacks. And I gotta tell you, after watching that in a quiet, dark room late at night, I started having chest pains because I thought maybe I'm having a heart attack. Now I know I wasn't, uh, but, but in this, this current environment, we see so much panic and with the 24 seven news cycle and all of that stuff going on, you know, it's always out there. Um, who should be tested? Yep. Right now we have to live within the uh, situations that we have, that being there's a limitation on the amount of testing we can do because of available materials. So as we go through the process of uh, finding ways to in involve testing more people, we'll have that information coming to us. 
Uh, right now, we're just testing people that have symptoms, that being fever and a lot of respiratory issues. Anybody that has significant problems with shortness of breath or coughing and fever generally should be concerned about it. If it gets to the point where you're having difficulties that you can't uh, live very uh, well at home with your shortness of breath and it's becoming like a significant asthma type situation and you can't get it straightened out, you need the attention. But that's the situation we live in, who should be tested. Now, the last 24 hours they discussed the F uh, Food and Drug Administration uh, okayed another type of test that can be turned around in about 45 minutes. They expect that to be available for widespread use closer to the end of March. And, and just to clarify, when you're talking about severe respiratory issues, you're not talking about just the, the uh, general shortness of breath you might get from running up a flight of stairs or something like that. Yeah, most of the people that have you know shortness of breath on a regular basis will know when they're getting into trouble. But typically speaking, in the situation of shortness of breath, we would be concerned if you're having shortness of breath at rest. If you're having difficulties at that level, uh, when you're just sitting around watching television, that's a concern. Okay. All right, so what general precautions should anyone and everyone be taking? As we had talked about the respiratory uh, uh, transmission through droplets, we have to keep in mind what we need to watch out for. That means we need to be sure that we're not getting around people that are coughing and sneezing and, and uh, having difficulties with their breathing. So anybody that's like that, you need to separate yourself from and uh, typically stay about six feet away from most everybody. Uh, those types of things will generally keep you from getting into most of the droplet situations. Hand sanitizers and soap are important. And so if you are out in public for any period of time, uh, surfaces could be contaminated. We want you to go home and wash your hands. If you can't wash your hands with soap and water for a period of time, but you know you've been around things that need to be worried about, use the hand sanitizers. That's when you can't get around soap and water. Okay. So tell us more about social distancing. What is that? And this is especially important for us here at Crossroads, and that is when will we know it's safe to start hugging people again? Yeah, social distancing uh, is a main concern right now with those droplets. And so you generally want to stay about six feet away from anybody you're traveling near in the public and areas. Of course, anybody that you have concerns about being infected with in the home, you want to stay six feet away from. And also uh, remember that touching things, touching each other could transmit things. So if you are in a situation where you're in around people for any reason, you just generally need to stay your distance. Don't touch them. Uh, wait for hugging to, until everything's under control again and uh, we'll be fine. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, let's shift gears here a little bit. How do vaccines work? Because there's been a lot of talk about uh, developing a vaccine and, and I know some people are hesitant when it comes to, to vaccinations. Uh, so if and when, I think it's more a, que a question of when, when a vaccine is developed, who should get that? So how do they work and who should get it? Very good. Well, the, the main thing about vaccines that we need to preface with is that, uh, it, generally speaking, most vaccines we use for the uh, public uh, uh, concerns related to communicable diseases are about 80% effective if they're generally produced in large quantities. That includes flu vaccine. And anything that you do to take vaccines, you have to be aware that Generally speaking, 100% of the population is not going to be protected if everybody got the vaccine. So if we get 80%, they consider that relatively good. So if they do have a chance of making a, a virus vaccine for this particular one, it may take a year or two in order for us to find out how effective it is and whether it's even widespread usable we generally are going to have to investigate that and that takes a lot of time. So we might find that out that's going to take a while. If they find that it's important to give it to widespread ish, uh, situations, uh, other than the people that are most susceptible, we'll find out about that as well. But typically speaking, uh, you're going to find that they're going to be most interested in giving this vaccine to the people that are most susceptible, just like we 
produce a very strong admonition for people who are older to get the flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So let's kind of wrap it up here. Specifically, how do you think that as Christians we should respond to this pandemic? Well, God told us and commanded us not to fear. So we need to be aware of the fact that we don't have, as Christians, the need to be afraid because God is our God and he created all things. And he wants us to be uh, able to live our lives as he wants us to. And he says, do not fear. Perfect love casts out fear, as has been stated a number of times in our church situations here over the last few years. One of the things that I want you to be aware of in regards to this is that Paul also tells us we need to obey our authorities in the government. If they tell us to do things, we're supposed to follow what they tell us to do. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to follow their uh, stipulations if you have an opportunity to intervene. And we in America are used to having freedom, and we don't like to be quarantined. As you know, this has become very stressful, even just for a week, for most of us to stay in our home. And so this is going to be an issue that if in the next three or four weeks we find out that we haven't really done anything to stop the spread of this disease, we're going to have to start talking and writing to our state legislators and other people that are in the government to let them know we're not going to tolerate this very well. And they also need to know that we, we have to have you know, uh, some aspect of, of organized understanding of what is actually in the benefit of the entire nation as a whole. Now, God tells us, and specifically Jesus said to his disciples, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. So when he wants us to go out and spread his kingdom into the world, and to let them know the good news of the gospel, he wants us to be not drawing attention to ourselves because serpents don't do that. They don't want to be seen. They want to go around relatively well hidden. So we need to be shrewd like serpents are in that fashion. But we also need to be innocent as doves. We need to obey the authorities. We need to obey the word of God. And so when we're doing this, we need to keep this in mind, to know that we need to love other individuals, even when it hurts, and to give God's love, the agape love, as the primary instruction for us today. So as we go forth from this time on, keep in mind that we as a church are commanded to do certain things. We must obey. So as we go through this, let us keep those uh, ideas in mind and how to love one another, watch out for one another, and take care of those who are most vulnerable. All right. Thanks, Mike. I'm going to ask Mike to pray for us in just a minute, and then I'll have some concluding thoughts for this segment. Yep. Okay. Dear Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come to you because in knowing that you are there and that you are always with us is a great comfort. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to uh, interact in this particular season of our history of our country. Lord, let us be your shining light in this world of darkness. Lord, help us to love those people that need to be loved the most, those that are most vulnerable, those that have difficulties in facing these challenges, those that are fearing anything that, that might have to do with their life or anything that might interfere with their life. Help us to love them through it. Give them the support they need. And specifically, we pray, Lord, for those who are uh, serving in the capacity of giving care to those who are sick. Lord, give them the opportunity to do the things that need to be done. Give them the right tools to have available so that they can do the job that they have in protecting themselves. Lord, thank you for helping us today to understand better your words and how to obey them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Mike. Now listen, if you're watching this on any social media platform, I want to encourage you to please share it with anybody and everybody. If you found it to be helpful, let the whole world know. And when you do that, please tag either me and or the church in that so we know that the message is getting out there. Also, we will make the decision week by week as to exactly how we're going to be doing our services. This morning at Crossroads, we had a few people here, what we call the, the necessary crew, if you will, 
and uh, encourage people to attend online like you're doing now. Uh, if that's going to continue, it might, depending on what the government guidelines are, we will let you know. So make sure that you stay connected on our Facebook page. And if you're not already, if you still do email, please make sure that I have your email address so I can make sure that we send you our weekly email, which has been a little more than a weekly lately with all that's going on. So we won't inundate you with emails, but we will keep you informed and share with you as well prayer requests and praise reports as those things come up as well. But I want to thank you for taking this time, and let's just continue to pray together that God will use this opportunity to be glorified and use us to bring people into his kingdom. God bless you. Have a great day.